The science on why we absorb other people's emotions. And how to deal with it. When we carry our own feelings, in addition to those of others, it can become overwhelming. As a psychotherapist, I observe many clients who prioritize others' well-being over their own. The overwhelming majority of them are introverts or highly sensitive people, HSPs. This extremely pro-social way of thinking stems from the immense empathy that many introverts and HSPs possess. Caring deeply comes naturally to us. However, it is precisely this overwhelming desire to assist that can lead to tiredness and emotional burnout. Let's examine the science behind why some people take on the emotions and obligations of others, and how introverts and HSPs can avoid the enmeshment trap. Before that, please remember to like, subscribe and comment because we donate $1 to www.savethechildren.org every month for every new subscriber who joins our community. So by subscribing, you are already helping the children too while enjoying our videos. Why do we absorb other people's emotions? When an Italian study team examined the brains of macaque monkeys in the 1990s, they discovered something surprising, specific cells that fired when the monkeys observed another animal grasp an object and then fired again when the monkeys grasped the object themselves. In other words, when a researcher picked up a peanut, several motor neurons in the monkey began to fire. Surprisingly, these identical neurons also fired when the monkey handled the peanut, thereby establishing the existence of what we now refer to as mirror neurons. Although not completely understood, mirror neurons are believed to assist us in imitating others. For instance, observing someone take a drink may cause your mouth to moisten and you to become thirsty. This reaction is caused by your mirror neurons firing, simulating the conditions in the brain of the individual who is drinking. Mirror neurons are found in the prefrontal cortex of humans, the area of the brain directly behind the eyes that is responsible for morality, planning, decision-making, and social interaction. They assist us in learning as children by imitating others, which explains why toddlers are so adept at mimicking their parents' every motion. These same mirror neurons could potentially be involved in the imitation of emotional experiences. Giacomo Rizzolatti, a neuroscientist at the University of Parma and one of the researchers who discovered mirror neurons, thinks they may help explain how we read other people's brains and feel their emotions. For instance, when you watch a film in which the protagonist loses someone they care about, you, the audience, may experience melancholy. Alternatively, when a friend is joyful, you experience and comprehend that enjoyment as well, as your mirror neurons replicate what you are watching. The peril of entanglement. If you're an introvert or HSP, you're undoubtedly already aware of the drawbacks. Empathy can devolve into what we refer to as enmeshment. This is a state in which, rather than just comprehending another person's emotions, we take on their emotional responsibilities as if they were our own. Enmeshment is a blurring of boundaries, and when boundaries get blurred, the resulting repercussions can be catastrophic for both parties in a relationship. For instance, one of my clients recently expressed that she had to look after her mother due to her extreme sadness. This client's mother is more than capable of managing her own emotions, but my client is so empathic that she adopts her mother's sentiments as her own. This is a mother-daughter relationship that is entwined. The mother is unaware of how much of her emotional condition her daughter is absorbing, and the daughter is unaware that by caring for her mother, she is absorbing sadness and stress that are not hers to bear. Does this sound familiar? Enmeshment or ambiguous boundaries can result in sadness, anxiety, tension, and other mental health problems. When we carry our own feelings, in addition to those of others, it can become overwhelming. Anyone, introvert or extrovert, would find it difficult to bear additional emotions. However, in my experience, introverts tend to overthink and dissect their feelings even more. When introverts are unable to comprehend why they are upset or anxious, they may spiral into negative thinking. The most difficult aspect of enmeshment for introverts is that once they begin, it is difficult to stop. 
If we consider my client's situation, she began to adopt the feelings of her friends, then her acquaintances, and finally anyone who happened to be experiencing powerful emotions. It became so awful for her that she developed stress-related diseases, such as gastrointestinal problems and headaches. When her doctors couldn't offer her anything more than lower stress, she turned to me for assistance. We uncovered her muddled emotional boundaries with others around her together. It was a light bulb moment when we realized that the source of her issues was her relationship with her mother, along with her extraordinary empathy. We were able to begin collaborating on which feelings belonged to her and which to her mother. How to handle enmeshment. Not all introverts and highly sensitive individuals deal with enmeshment. However, if you do, it may be beneficial to conduct an emotional inventory. What are your emotions? Are you able to determine the source or origins of these feelings? For instance, if you're furious or disturbed, might these emotions be attributed to a disagreement with a friend? A bad day at work? Being able to determine the origins of your emotions can assist you in comprehending and learning from them. If you are unable to identify a catalyst for your emotions, or if they feel remote or unreal, it may be time to examine which relationships are depleting you. Are you picking up on your coworker's stress? Is your friend enraged at someone and has just voiced her frustrations to you? These could be indicators that the feelings you're harboring aren't truly yours. The easiest part of this equation is identifying emotions and their sources. The following step, while tough, is critical, establishing boundaries. This includes understanding when to say no, when to end a relationship, and how to let others deal with their own emotions. This may be the most challenging phase if you are extremely empathic. It helps to remember that the most kind thing we can do for others is to allow them to learn and develop from their feelings, not to try to take them away. This does not imply a lack of empathy or a refusal to assist others. It involves putting in the effort to be there for them while also taking care of ourselves. Self-compassion is one of the most effective tools I've discovered for re-establishing limits. Because entanglement and fuzzy boundaries can weaken self-esteem, self-compassion can help us rediscover our true worth. Bear in mind that your needs are just as essential as anyone else's. Take a break for self-compassion Kristen Neff is a self-compassion researcher who offers numerous self-compassion exercises and resources on her website. The self-compassion break is one of my favorite self-compassion exercises. This is a brief yet effective activity that will assist you in incorporating self-compassion into your daily life. To begin your self-compassion break, consider a challenging scenario in your life and the feelings associated with it. Acknowledge the situation's hardship with a brief sentence such as, this is painful, or, I'm stressed. Remind yourself that everyone suffers. I am not the only one who feels this way, or, I am not alone. Give yourself some compassion, it's helpful to consider what you need to hear or what you'd tell a friend in a similar situation. It's alright to be stressed and to give myself a break, or, I can accept myself as I am, failures and all. Avoiding enmeshment can be a difficult undertaking, but with the appropriate resources and people in your life, you can establish healthy boundaries that allow you to be sensitive and loving while maintaining your center. Introverts and HSPs have a priceless talent of empathy that should be fostered and cherished. However, in order for empathy to be effective, you must first look after yourself. And that is it for this video. Before you go, Please remember to like, subscribe and comment because we donate $1 to www.savethechildren.org every month for every new subscriber who joins our community. So by subscribing, you are already helping the children too while enjoying our videos. See you again.